Unlimited power! Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn and welcome to Minecraft Bewitchment, how to get altar power and how the heck this little square thing works right here. All right, so altars, main power source battery thing for the Bewitchment mod, possibly one of the most important blocks in this mod as it allows you to do all the different magics and witchcrafts that can be found within this book. If you don't have an altar, you don't got nothing. Altars can be placed anywhere in the world, but they are a useless block until you add carpet to them. This will activate them and they'll start detecting the area around them. Altars draw power from nature around them. So the more nature they have around them, the more power they have. Starting here, this altar has 35 power. An uh, altar on top of this dead natureless mountain has zero power capacity and zero power in it. Whereas an uh, altar that we were to place in the center of these woods has 96 power going for it, which is a lot better than anything else. But even 96 power is not enough to do anything in this mod. For the minimum amount of power besides the smallest of magics is about 150 that you want. The maximum power required for rituals, which require almost the highest amount of mana, is 850. And 96 is nowhere near there. As well as just to clear things up for people who are concerned with the mana cost of curses, it tells you in the little conducting curse overview in the book, and it takes 400 mana for a little curse and 800 mana for a big curse. So how can we get more power into our altar? Well, there are multiple ways to do it. One of them is to put in amongst more trees, and we'll get into that. But before that, let us talk about little baubles that you can add to your altar to make it more powerful. So here we have a collection of the various different baubles you have. There's three different kinds. There are swords, which give a flat out multiplier bonus to altar. So this altar gives us three 35 power, and when we add a sword, it's going to multiply it by probably uh, 0.5, 1.5 to increase it. Now the multiplier seems to be based on the quality of the sword. Diamond and netherite swords seem to have a slightly better multiplier, so the higher tier the sword, the better the multiplier. Next is skulls and gems. You can get skulls in the base game and, of course, gems in the base game. So a diamond gives it a multiplier of 2, whereas the skull gives it a multiplier of 3. Now this isn't storage capacity, but rather recharge rate. So once you get it to a higher level, your mana will recharge faster. And then there are rods, which can be added, like torches and candelabra and end rods, which give it a flat out bonus. The end rod gives the highest flat bonus, while the candelabra is about middle of the road, and the torch is the lowest in the order of giving the bonus. And this bonus does not multiply along with the swords you have in place. With the sword and the candle, you're probably not going to be getting the mana levels you want. And the skull or gem is not going to do anything for you besides multiply how fast you get it. So how do you actually get tons and tons of mana. To get to the levels you want, you have to increase biodiversity around your altar. Every single plant around the altar will increase the amount of ME it produces, but at diminishing returns for plants of the exact same variety. As all this altar is drawing on is grass, and those small flowers over there, it is not actually getting a whole lot of power. If I introduce poppies into its arrangement, it will hopefully detect and increase slightly with the new poppies added. Detection will take a small amount of time, but it will eventually increase it. However, you may have noticed these five poppies have only increased the power by four, so it's not even a one for one in diminishing returns. So you need more diversity, and certain plants also give better power than others, such as trees. Trees are an incredibly important source of power to have near altar, and they will vastly increase its output. The oak tree almost doubled the amount of power it had, bringing it all the way up to 53. 
And if we continue to add oaks into the environment, they will continue to increase the amount of power the altar produces. However, again, the diminishing returns have come into play. And what we should be at is around 90 power if it was to continue climbing linearly. However, it is not climbing linearly. It is slowly declining. Each additional tree gives slightly less power. So to solve this problem and to add even more power, we have to, yet again, biodiversify the trees and plants we have around this altar. Now, an altar's range is about 24 blocks in each direction that can detect for drawing mana from. This includes above and below the altar, so it's detecting the leaf blocks and the tree blocks. So if we are to add poplar within 24 of the altar to the equation, this should hopefully yet again increase the amount of mana that it has in storage and can produce from 75 all the way up to 118 for just two new poplars. However, we will find if we keep on planting the poplars that it will begin to diminish yet again. So you have to keep on diversifying the biome. This is possible to do in survival. It just requires you to collect a lot of different types of saplings and bone meal. And thankfully, this mod happens to detect anything that's categorized as a plant. So every new kind of tree will give more mana and help increase it. If you add too many of the same kind of tree, then the mana returns you'll be getting will be diminishing. However, they will still give you a small amount of mana and you do require repeats just because there is a lack of trees to pick from. However, there is still enough to get basically any amount of power you would like. Because not only is there, I think, around seven or eight natural trees within Minecraft, four different trees can be found in Bewitchment and these two also give the altar power. You may find that your new force is taking up a lot of space and the range of detection that an altar can give is only 24 blocks. And while that is big, you still need spaces to do ritual circles and various other things. But you can already see with just this simple amount of trees around it in a pretty straightforward grove, we've almost gone 800 power. But you can do better than that and you can do it with less space. And that's where stacking trees comes from. Because you can just plant blocks of dirt down on top of the leaves and grow a second tree on top. And then you can get a very nicely self-contained grove or forest for yourself and have the range to still do rituals and various other things requiring power. This here produces 1,232 power without any additional things on top of it. And it has plenty of room around it to still cast rituals. This is the maximum distance it can be away, 24. And I can still do my rituals in this circle and have plenty of power to do them with. If I simply do the ritual of Diluge, then we'll get range and it's within the range of the spell. Any further and the spell will not happen. So the altar power or ME, magic power, is actually really straightforward of just requiring a bunch of different plants. Sugar cane, the vines on the trees, the planted flowers from Bewitchment, the crops in the base game of Minecraft, weeds, flowers, ferns, all of these increase the ME of the altar. But just remember, the more of the same type you, of plant you have, the less power you'll be getting overall. And something else to keep in mind is these plant blocks don't have to be so Sid natural as long as they're plant blocks. Now you may find that it does take a lot of logs to get anywhere with the power, but you can just build a crazy log wooden structure around an altar if you are so inclined to drive yourself to that kind of insanity. So just keep that in mind. And altar power goes up and down, so you can build gardens below them, you could build gardens above them and all around them, and then you can choose after building the garden where you want the power to go. So to simplify everything I just said, and to speed it up into a explanation that can be bite-sized, to get altar power, you simply need a lot of plants around the altar of a lot of different kinds, 
and you should stack them on top of each other to save for space and probably put a sword onto it and maybe a candle if you feel like it, but the sword's the thing that really matters. Something to note is having two altars will not help you out as the ritual will draw from the weaker one so you cannot actually abuse having two in the same area. And yeah, that is basically how altars work. A little in-depth look into it and very simple how to just get maximum power is, well, plant trees around it of all kinds, plant flowers of all kinds, and yeah, plant crops, water things, any plants you can plant, plant them, and then that'll increase your altar power then slap a sword onto that bad boy, get a little more power, and boom, there you have it. That's how you get altar power. And unlimited power can be getting through the creative cheat block called Bless Stone, which you simply put on top of an altar, and it will amplify all altar power to the nine hells. So if you just want to have fun creative, you can use that thing. Right. So anyways, thank you very much for watching. And sorry I didn't make this video sooner, but I'll catch y'all next. But I'll catch y'all next time in something fun and cool as well. So see you there. Bye.